Good afternoon. My name is Javier Arriola Lopez. I'm the proud principal of uh, Rachel Carson Elementary School in Chicago. And so I'm going to share with you our journey into coding at elementary school. Uh, so before that, I'm going to explain to you a little bit about Chicago Public Schools and how they launched coding. So coding was started in Chicago Public Schools uh, in 2013. And so it was a very small uh, department, but very ambitious department. So, and they wanted to do it right. So they only selected, uh, they opened it up to 25 schools and Carson was one of the schools. And uh, what it attracted me as the principal was the professional development behind it. Because I always knew as a principal that if there is no professional development, then it falls apart. Um, so along the way, uh, Chicago Public Schools now in their ambitious plan, they want to have 161 schools uh, have coding by the end of next year. And also, we have been visited by many large districts, and they want to replicate our approach to coding. And, um, and then we took advantage of all the media that was happening about the White House, you know, embracing coding, and, uh, and also local government wanted to also uh, have coding, and we took advantage of the different uh, uh, media, also the local media, the news, they were coming also as well there. And in the meantime, Chicago Public School was revamping its policy about preparing our Chicago Public School students when they finish high school to be mandated to have one, one grade or one credit hour of coding by when, be part of the graduation uh, of, uh, credits that they have to have. And so a little bit about Carson School. We are in the south uh, west side of Chicago. I have uh, close to 1,100 students. Uh, mostly Hispanic, 97% of free and reduced lunch. Our very high level second language learners, 60% of our students second language learners. Diverse learners, 6%, uh, 8%. And uh, because we took advantage of our second language learners, we have a dual language program that goes from preschool all the way to, eighth, uh, to fifth grade. And so when we started revamping our vision and mission at Carson, we started thinking about, okay, so the three R's is pretty well uh, known by teachers, but now we have to think about the C, coding. And so that's how we embrace it. Now we always talk about the three R's and also the C, which is coding at Carson. And the dual language teachers are thinking about how coding is a third language. So for most of our students, coding has become the third language, parents really embrace it, and it goes along with the 21st century uh, skills that our students have uh, to be uh, having, and then also is upward mobility. We knew that a lot of the jobs uh, there are unfulfilled here in the United States, and we wanted to have our students to get the skills that they needed so that they can be ready for the jobs, that the, the IT jobs in the United States. And so um, uh, the other part of it also that it draws also our teachers and our parents was, we need to close a lot of gaps. And one of the gaps was about minorities in the STEMs. And so, and, and sometimes even more so girls. So we wanted to make sure that we we're not only closing the gaps of upward mobility, but we wanted to close the gaps of minority being represented in the STEMs. And so um, Carson uh, a school has participated, code.org is one of the uh, organizations that sponsor coding for our kids. We have participated every year, so we wanted to have everyone participating in the hour of code that it happens in December. And then we also were able to leverage our middle school students to have uh, at least two classes in middle school so that when they are go into high school, they can go into the AP classes of coding because that was not even unheard of whether it be minority or, or women or girls, they were not part of the AP classes in Chicago Public Schools. It was almost non-existent. We, we wanted to change that part of it. And then on top of, uh, along the way, we wanted to make it live. So the students were coding. We wanted to have also have common robotics. And one year when Chicago Public School had the money, we took advantage of it. We brought it to Carson. It was just that year. Uh, the year, and then, uh, then it started creating a commotion about minority students and, and be participating in the STEM cell, in the STEMs part of it. And so we start visiting by different uh, local TV, uh, precisely about Hispanic, about African American, about girls. And so we, take we took advantage of that. And what we really wanted to do was to really kind of convince the mayor that it was a good idea to have coding across all CPS schools 
that we could, that we could become the second Vatican City in the, in the Great Lakes. But it didn't happen, so we still are continue moving forward and working uh, with the mayor and, the, uh, and, and Chicago Public Schools. The small department that they have, although, although they already have changed the policy about high school graduation requirements in having one uh, credit before they graduate. So uh, we dealt a lot with technology and we thought about how it was gonna look like. We don't, we don't have technology one-on-one, -on -one. we only have one to three. In middle school we have one-on-one, -on -one, but that, didn't, that was not a problem. When we start seeing our students being engaged in coding, that became the opportunity and say, now we have to figure out how we can bring the technology, but they didn't really became, they didn't become a problem of it. And so uh, we wanted to be ambitious. We wanted to have a school wide, but it didn't happen either. So about 50% of our teachers are teaching coding, because that's the other question we have was, should it be only the technology uh, computer teacher teaching coding, or should it be a school wide? We decided to go school wide. So not everyone teaches coding, but in the middle schools they do. And the, again, the major, uh, the, the main organization is code.org, but we also have Swift by Apple that is investing more and more in Chicago public schools. Uh, and so here's a little bit of the programs that we have, code.org, bookstraps, middle school for algebra, project guides for science. So it was very content oriented also, uh, programming the students are learning in those areas. So here are the questions that we have. Uh, want to teach coding, so we tell a lot was it supposed to be in mathematics, in, in, in science, we decided to be more like in a science block in elementary school. Uh, who should be teaching it? Again, the computer teacher, or is it going to be the classroom teacher? We decided the classroom teachers to do, and how do we advocate at the district that the, uh, the, the network, Chicago Public Schools are broken up in different networks, and then also in different schools so we can get the support. Uh, the lot of technology was another question that we have, and, and we'll still continue moving forward. We want our students to have opportunities to be part of, to be kind of going into the different IT uh, uh, companies that we have in Chicago so they can be, and be part almost like a mentorship. We're still working on that, so we wanna make it, we wanna make it live for the students. And we already changed those their narrative. A lot of the schools in, uh, in Chicago public schools they have coding as one of the ways, so that's another way of our students to be moving into high schools that they're gonna be, they're, one of the major components in the high schools is coding. Thank you very much.